It's the and highs and lows of 2015 on Field Sports Channel, plus Kai is let loose on a Norwegian elk. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Just trying to do a little bit of filming. You couldn't just move out of the back of the shop, could you? Uh, Wales doesn't have a capital, does it? <laughs> Inch high? Yeah. And it is just about that far out. Hither, yeah. Okay. And that's <laughs> that's so, did you just say hither? Hither. Yeah, Come hither. hither. Is that what? Oldie word in English. Well, Kai was teaching me those words. <laughs> Come on, boys. Let's get it together, please. Traffic is a problem at the game fair, so here is my new traffic manager. Hello, boys and girls. Working on Field Sports Channel this year has taken us from the Arctic Circle to the equator, from the mountains of Kyrgyzstan to the hills of Hungary. But we find some of the greatest hardships in jolly old Great Britain. Is there anything else you ask? Well, yes, there is. You feel you can get a car that's... Oh, God, mate, you've got a car. Finally, you can... <laughs> Excellent. Okay, love, what's your name? Where'd you come from? Uh, my name's Susan. I'm from uh, Liverpool, but sadly my accent's kind of all Manchester. Biting licks off the crop. That was a bad decision. <laughs> Here, up to there. Okay, good. Um, and then when they ask you. <laughs> Do you like a bit of sewing? Oh my god, I can't believe I've said that on camera. <laughs> yeah, Kai will probably come out of the bushes in a minute. I expect him to cook that. I, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and put it in a baguette. Uh, that would look lovely in a yeah, baguette, wouldn't it? A bit of lettuce around, oh. a bit of tomato, yeah. a bit of mayonnaise, barbecue oh, sauce. Don't you get me going? Barbecue sauce. With a bit of homemade horse, horse radish sauce with it. Just have you got have you got a bit of designer jealous. stubble coming? I, have you got a bit of designer stubble coming on? I'm going to show tonight, but I'm going to grow something. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> the award for presenter under pressure of the year goes to Tim Pillbeam, stuck on a Scottish hillside in one of the worst days for midges anyone can remember. Anyway, we better be move on because we've been eaten alive by these, these blinking midges, so let's crack on. He's watching. We will not hit any orange claims. Hi, Mommy. Hi, Daddy. I will be in a TV. Welcome to Clay Sports. Coming up, we <laughs> tackle the Jolly Green Jack Pike Giant. Welcome to Clay Sports. Coming up, we tackle the Jack Pike. Da! Jolly Green. Jolly. Peter Wilson is our star presenter for Clay Sports, our monthly clay shooting show. He is a busy man, so another stellar shooter, Abby Ling, kindly steps in, though she's a lot more careful about what she says. No, I don't know. Sounds a bit bloody jobby. <laughs> Jolly Green Jack Pike Giant. Queen guitarist, national treasure and... They're happy. And it's waterproof. You can go out in the rain. There you go. But this is not a dog for normal people to have yet. You, you have will say we don't, but I'm not normal. Yes. <laughs> Lovely setting for a good party. Me and you. There's a me and, <laughs> me and Dave. Have you got your lens cap up or down? Thank you. That'll make life a bit more. Oh, I wonder why I couldn't see much. <laughs> this is David in Kyrgyzstan eating local cheese that he believes is Pony's testicles. <laughs> That's it, David. Initiation. Come on, David. Be honest. 
Come on, you can do it. And during his Asian adventure, he met Rob Gearing, the fire starter, the twisted fire starter. Yeah, look, there's a lovely bit of Harkeela bum fluff. Life will never be the same, and David's hair certainly has a life of its own. I haven't washed my hair for a while. Brilliant. Now, all that remains for me to say is a big thank you to everyone who has appeared on the show this year, and to all of you like-minded folk out there Ow. for being part of See the Field Sports world. Gang. <laughs> thank you for your continued support. We really couldn't do it without you. Now, somebody else who needs a bit of support, probably a girdle, it's David on the Field Sports Channel, new stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. More than 250,000 people supported their local hunt meets across the UK on Boxing Day. The showpiece events that often take place in market squares are a sign, say the Countryside Alliance, that the ban on hunting with dogs is in tatters. This one shows the Chipstable Foxhounds meet in Wivelscombe, Somerset, in the Sussex town of Lewis, where the Antis tried and failed to get the hunt banned from the town centre. Just a few saboteurs turned up to protest while the Southdown and Eridge Terrymen put on their usual show of being foxes. Country Coats to Syria was hard at work over Christmas. The project by hunters, shooters and farmers aims to provide coats for Syrian refugees in camps in Turkey. Richard Walton left the Boxing Day meet of the Devon and Somerset Staghounds with his car full to the roof with bags of coats for the project. Search for Country Coats to Syria. The new Top Gear presenter Chris Harris is a keen shooter. Chris's show on YouTube has 350,000 subscribers, along with BBC regular Chris Evans, German racing driver Sabine Schmidt and Scotsman David Coulthard, Chris replaces the old team of Clarkson, May and Hammond. Jeremy Clarkson's disparaging comments about badges this week made him a poster boy for the Antis. A country music star is feared dead after his duck hunting party was struck by bad weather. Backroad anthem lead singer Craig Strickland has been declared missing and his pal Chase Morland found dead following what appears to be a tragic accident. The pair went duck hunting on an Oklahoma lake during the Christmas holidays and the pair's boat was found capsized early on the morning of the 28th of December. And finally, Toyota wins the Pants Prize this week. It's pulled a TV commercial after pressure from animal rights groups, even though the animals in it were all CGI. In the ad, animals are shown to look forward to their demise at the hands of hunters because it means they get to ride in the back of a Hilux. Thanks to YouTube channel Hunt and Fish Mike for being brave enough to show this clearly horrifying commercial. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, Kai has fallen in love with Scandinavia after his reindeer exploits, and he's back in Norway after an elk. is a moose not a moose when it's an helk and that's just what Kai is going to be hunting this weekend in the Norwegian forests. He has been invited by Thomas, a keen hunter, motorbike enthusiast and one-man band. He's a bit eccentric which is lucky because Kai's friend Trigger is no shrinking violet. Looks like our tame wild game cook has quite a weekend ahead of him. Let's start the hunt with fireworks. Why? Who knows? But there it is. <laughs> I was about to hit the deck. I thought we were being shot at. <laughs> it's just gone seven o'clock and they're putting fireworks in the morning. These guys are bloody crazy. <laughs> While some hunters like to keep the noise to a minimum, in Norway they start the day with a bang. A 
Unfortunately, day one delivers a blank, although there's a brief sighting. Wolves are being blamed for a drop in numbers. Fireworks are not. So we're here in Thomas's refrigeration unit, where I've got a calf that's been hanging for about four days now. So I'm going to take the shoulder off this calf. I'm going to make a fantastic curry this evening. I'm going to dice it up and make an Indonesian style curry. At the most we shot 90 moose. 90 moose? 90 moose. And this quota this year is 15. And you see what's hanging here. That's incredible. So three nine, calves. So 90 moose down to 15 and you left the three calves here right. at the moment. Right. And that's because of the, the wolves and... Yeah. Uh, that's amazing. That's, that's amazing. But it was too much. I mean, it was too many. Yeah. yeah. That was not good either, because it destroys the forest. It was too many moose, but now you've you got it down to number, so but now they're getting a bit low. The pendulum, you know? Yeah. So you just want to rise up again. Yeah. Right. And that's why when we're out there today, you're, you're quite strict with managing. So yeah. no cows, no, cows. Um, no twin calves, so only, only this right one calf. Um, only the bulls that has got more than four or one. Yeah. So yeah, they're quite strict when it comes down to shooting moose at the moment, and rightly so, to try and get the numbers back up to a sustainable level. Kai is going to prepare dinner tonight, and it's going to be Indiwegian fusion, or what you might call a culture clash, elk curry. It's for the uh, Indonesian curry. I've got a couple of chilies, just roughly chop them, pop them in the food processor. About 250 grams here of shallots. I'm going to chuck them all in once I've peeled them. Four to five cloves of garlic. And some ginger. About three quarters of a teaspoon of turmeric. I've got some coriander seeds here, so probably about a teaspoon in a bit. We're going to add brown sugar and lemongrass to it and kaffir leaves and lime still so So it's been roughly about two hours now. Everyone's enjoying themselves in the back. And this is just about ready. You can see the sauce is reduced. So a lot of the meat is exposed and coated by the sauce. So that's exactly what we want. I'm throwing in a bit of extra coriander in there, some fresh coriander. But now that is ready. Food is very much at the heart of all this hunting. An army marches on its stomach. And if Kai does shoot one of these animals, it needs an army to get it out. So the time is now 7.30 in the morning and we're just woken up to an absolutely stunning, beautiful Norwegian sunrise with pink skies and just amazing scenery. Um, Thomas has got the working party ready. The rest of them are down there, so we've got everything that we need, the rifle and ammunition and food and coffee. And then we're about to set off, and hopefully today we get ourselves a moose. Kai's patience pays off, and he gets to witness his first elk within shooting range. The bull and calf, however, do not present a shot, and they move off. I can see his ass. I can see his antler. I couldn't see anything in the middle. No. That was that was incredible. That was incredible. <laughs> A few minutes later, a shot is heard. The bull has fallen to one of the other hunters. You recognise it? I waved at it. <laughs> it's absolutely incredible. It's the first time I've seen a, a shot moose. And you were saying that you think this is going to be over 500 kilos in weight. That's amazing. I'm used to seeing red deer in England and fallow deer. <laughs> this is like deer on steroids. And it came, it came by us, and I could see his behind, and I could see his antler. I just couldn't see the middle, and then it just went. And then, luckily, one of these guys here down the line, yep, 
That's a group effort. So everyone, everyone here is part of a team. Yeah. Work, everyone works together. A lot of meals. A lot of meals, yes. Yeah. It'll feed the 5,000. So around 250 kilo carcass. 250 kilo carcass weight. It's an impressive sight. The operation to extract an animal of this size brings the hunters together as a team. We often use the expression a team of guns for game shooting in the UK, but here the team is essential to get all this meat home. Kai is used to red and fallow deer, but this is something very different. We, we've got like the beast on site and we've partly skinned it and you can see how ginormous a moose actually is. I'm five foot ten and this is, well if I put my hand up there I still don't even reach the back end of it so a truly magnificent huge animal, something that I'm not used to seeing. It's awesome. While stalking in the UK can be a solitary experience, the size of this beast brings a community together and that is no bad thing. Thank you, Kai. No shortage of moose burgers from that beast. Next up, let's go from Norway to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube. It is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. It's been an uncomfortable week for rabbits. Viewer Howie Holiday from New Zealand sends in this film of Billy the Springer Spaniel and Archie the Cocker Spaniel. The sun is shining and the sky is blue, he writes, just to remind all you in the Northern Hemisphere that winter and rain won't last forever. Well, look at this, Howie. Despite what you see on the news, here is Dale Muse 1 in the UK enjoying perfect conditions and more rabbits than his team of hawkers can fit in their bags. They're out with with Stella and Alan's young Harris. Bigger rabbits now, somewhere in Poland, Rose Stalker is after driven hares and walked up pheasants on Christmas Eve. For a flavour of partridge shooting in Cyprus, real snap shooting stuff, have a look at Erto Grohl 12's film Blink and You, and he misses them. And for duck and goose shooting in Canada, hired to hunt by Ongaro's outdoor outfitters is an accurate reflection of a goose guide's job the world over, maybe with a few more men and machines than some are used to. Two films now about men, their dogs and their hogs. This is how they do it in New Zealand. A man, an old dog, a workman-like rifle, nice and simple. This film is long. There's German for two minutes before you get to the action. It is serious stuff, as you can hear the dogs having it out with an injured sow. This dog handler has a rifle and a spear, shouts rude words at his dog, which is funnier than when English shooters do it, and you never quite see the ball. That's us Europeans making life complicated. And finally, there are lots of films on YouTube this year celebrating the Boxing Day meets up and down the UK. They are films of both defiance against the ban on hunting with dogs and a growing sense that, whatever the antis claim, we are winning the hunting argument. This is the Tiverton Foxhounds with more than 50 horses assembled in the Devon market town and its main street lined with people to see them on their way. That's it for this week and for this year. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, thanks for watching. We're back next week, next year, in fact, when we have new shows to tell you about. If you haven't done so already, please go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, or pop your email address into our constant contact box, and we'll constantly contact you about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday, and this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and Happy New Year.